Gracias. Welcome to this edition of the B. Andrews Radio Show. It is so good to have you along with us on this first day of August. Coming up to you, coming up to what? Anyway, coming to you on this radio show from Central Wisconsin. It is so good to be with you. I am Eric, one of your co-hosts. On the other side of the room is one of the other co-hosts, Emily. Say hi, Emily. Anahaseo. What was that? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Nazio. Okay. And <laughs> I've heard it pronounced both ways. Okay. And behind the um, microphone and computer, the uh, magic producer that makes us sound so good is K. Say hey, K. Magic. <laughs> All right. You um, believe in magic. Uh, yeah. So unicorns and rainbows, I guess, right? You love butterflies. butterflies. <laughs> I fell into that one. <laughs> All right. And it is so good being with you on this first day of August. Um, not necessarily the nicest day. In fact, um, it, it is giving us our subject matter for the day. Today, we are going to talk about the weather. It was really, really nice earlier today. Like... Oh, wow, this is like perfect for just staying out in the sun kind of day, not like sweating kind of day. It was, And all of a sudden I looked out onto the what, west. Yeah, it was the west. And all of a sudden I saw these rain clouds just come piling in. They came piling in, huh? Very, very much so, oh, yes. That, that is a real bummer. They were tripping over each other to ruin our day. That is literally true. Literally true. So I've yeah, I've got my cup of coffee here, and to our listening audience, something I haven't said for a long time. Cups up, and uh, we're so glad that you're with us on this day. Sit back, sip that. Sit back and sip that. That that's a good one. We got it. Can we get that on a t-shirt? Sit back, sip that. Exactly. Yeah. So if we get that on a T-shirt, well, somebody um, like um, there goes my phone, and I'm gonna I'm gonna ask one of our listening audience people if they would like go answer that for Assistant. me. Assistant. Yeah. Um, oui. At least today, anyway. So um, so we're 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 in the middle of this. It was a beautiful day, and now we've got this pop up thunderstorm that has come here. We're supposed to have thunderstorms all day. And so we thought that we would take the B Andrews radio show and that we would talk a little bit about the weather. And sounds uh, boring, but we have some pretty interesting stories. Uh, we, we do. <laughs> and and hopefully today we'll cover the gambit uh, about our our weather stories. We'll we'll do our summer stories. And up here, we can do winter stories. There's no sense talking about spring or fall stories because we don't have spring or fall. Um, we kind of, you know, we go from... It's sort of like a transition season into winter and out of winter, and that's it. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> you, you transition like same, into summer. It's like the same season. And then you transition into winter. And that, that's called, the transition is called spring. I think last year it happened on Tuesday. And um, it's a very funny story. You see, it all began on a Tuesday. Yeah, I well, kind of like spring. I think it was the same day spring came. And um, and then you, it, what is it's a frog? This? It's the frog, not the it's turtle. The frog. Oh, that thing. Okay, yes, that so thing. I got I got turtled. It's no, a I frog. Got, <laughs> that's right. I got frogged. I'm sorry. I did it again. It, it just it looks like a stinking. No, it no, doesn't. It doesn't even have a shell. To our listening audience, we have a photographer in studio with us today. Here, take a picture of this. It's Go, a go ahead. Frog. Take, a, take a picture a of this. Frog. Take more than one picture. Take more than one picture. And we will put it on our Facebook page with this show. So you want to watch this show and you'll see. Take as, a picture as, of the back. It, uh, take a picture of it like this so that everybody can see. I think it's a turtle. It has Your no hand shell. is the shell at this rate. And that's a very bad shell. <laughs> see what I mean? See, even you are, are you're complying with me. <laughs> no, oh, that's, that's a great fine. picture. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, well. So, anyway, we're working on shots. the frog We're working here. on shots going up on our Facebook page. So, you'll definitely want to be shots. there uh, and, and see that. And thank you for our official photographer, our band photographer, which is... High five! Which is Kimberly. Thank you, Kimberly, for doing that. And everything's cool with this? Okay, Ooh, so... I'm plug in messages. Kimberly's Instagram. What's your Instagram? Uh, Do you I, want your Instagram to go public? You don't care? <laughs> a photos yeah. one. What's Her your photos, photos one. one. Yeah, so people can see your shots. Where Come come here, lean into the microphone, tell everybody how to get in touch with you on 
What? No. No, you got to tell them. Come here, come here, come here. Hurry, yeah, hurry, hurry. Yeah, hurry. yeah, I'm yeah. I'm wasting your time. And here you do go. it live. Okay. And do it really Instagram, loud. Your Instagram photo. Oh, uh, look closer, look closer. K-I-M-I-D dot photos. Do it one more time. Really? K-I-M-I-D dot photos. There you go. Pho- photography is something. Really <laughs> photography <quiet. laughs> is something that she does. Yeah, she does photography. Uh, go there and check out uh, some of her work. Okay, really quiet. Back to the back to the. It's on Facebook too. Kimmy yeah. Kimmy photos. Yeah, Kimmy photos. Is it Kimmy, Kimmy D, photos. D photos on Facebook? Photography. So, photography. Kimmy, Kimmy D, D photography. photography. Okay. Photography. Totally forget everything. I Kimmy D photography on okay. Facebook. On Facebook and Kimmy dot photos. On, on Instagram. Instagram. Which, by the way, I am not on Instagram. Are you on Instagram? Yes. Yeah. She's on Instagram. I, po- Are you on I post Instagram? my yes. art photos on Instagram. What? You're you're yeah. on Instagram? Yeah. So I'm like the minority here. Because well, obviously Kimmy's on Instagram. Actually, we're all on Twitter. Except Kimmy here. Oh, she's not on Twitter. Because I'm on Twitter. I'm on Twitter. And she's she on She doesn't Twitter. tweet. And B, and B. Andrews is she, on Twitter. Yes. Okay. So, uh, you know, and by the way, even though I'm on Twitter, I never do my Twitter account. I always do everything through B. Andrews. Uh, which is another one of those pictures that we'll have to take down because it's John for all of you that are in our, you know, uh, familiar with our former radio uh, producer, John, who was here. It wasn't that long ago. You should make Karen the next one. Um, No. Oh, there you go. No. So be sure to get some really good shots. No, no. Get some really good shots of Kay behind the computer. (laughs) And uh, so we'll put our, we'll put our producer on. Just shoot me. Just, yeah, no, shoot her. No, no, no. We'll do Donut K. No. A picture of no, Donut no, K. That, I won't do Donut K. No. I won't do Donut K. But anyway. Why are you doing the retarded symbol? <laughs> For real. Um, and like so K is going to go on. And uh, we're working, as I had mentioned last time, we're working on a new um, a new website. Our, our old B. Andrews website is going down. It's going down. It's um, going down. No, and so no, it, it no. should be actually offline. You would not be able to find bandrewsband.com. It is gone. And uh, we're going to be with a new um, with a new URL. I'm hoping. Uh, well, actually, I better not mention it, so that way there'll be no confusion, but uh, there'll be a new URL we'll be catering to uh, the radio show, which uh, kind of interesting. If you ladies would like to hear something rather interesting, mm-hmm. uh, instead of, you know, over there voguing, you know, getting your, your photo taken and <laughs> striking poses. We're not. We're really just messing around. Okay. We're not. There's no, we're not striking poses oh, at all. That's not what it looks like from this side of the microphone. If I were to strike a pose, I'd be like. She, she just did it, everybody. So just so that you But know. I was just messing around. I was like... <laughs> right. <laughs> just so without So anyway, the <laughs> um, uh, B. Andrews' band, in a sense, is still alive and well. Uh, we just booked... <laughs> no, we just put it in no, the infirmary. No, it's not alive and well. <laughs> Rest in peace. B. Andrews' band is still hanging on by a heartbeat. Let yeah, me say it that it, way. We just put it in the infirmary. Yeah, um, but it, we did book... Clear. B. Andrews Band did book a a concert under B. Andrews Band, um, running with the. Uh, I'll be running with a couple of the younger guys that have John was teaching, and we'll be filling in under him, and we'll be doing uh, a concert down in Slinger, Wisconsin, huh. uh, later on in October. So, uh, B. Andrews Band, uh, at, at least the heart of it is beating. Um, this is you, you old fart. You've been through Sonic Demolition to be Andrew's band to just you and John, and now John's not even here. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Which, I mean, I'd still be willing to sing with you guys. I mean, that's fine. It's just I can't just, that's not like just the only thing I can do anymore. Well, on this particular one, you will, because they specifically requested no more than three. So um, we'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes. However, I do believe that we'll be doing worship over at One Way Cafe. Mm. So I might end up taking you up on that. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. Um, we'll just have to see how that goes. But anyway, uh, here we are in studio, um, and some things, uh, we're still working on the change around of everything. We're working on B. Andrews band quieting down. We're working on B. Andrews radio show, trying to get geared up. Uh, when Blog. the website comes back on, mm-hmm. it will be geared towards, um, 
It will be geared towards the B. Andrews uh, radio show. Uh, we'll be doing blogs there. I've already given Kay a notice that I expect her to do some blogging in this yeah. upcoming year. You know, what, you know what I think? Instead of doing, and here's just an idea, and they've never heard this before because I just had it, but I was thinking instead of on Barnyard Breakout being a, a like an on-air thing, what if we had Barnyard Breakout as like a story blog thing, like kind of like a comic? Oh, why don't we go both? Why don't we go both? You know, let's experiment with it. Because let's I see hate where... writing in script form. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know how much well, I let's, hate Let's do a little bit of both. Form. But that, that'll be for our off-air discussion. But uh, definitely let's keep that in mind. See which way that it goes. We do want to get back to a little bit of Fat Man and Bobbin. Uh, <laughs> writing some of our shows. We, we, we need to get back with commercials. But we got a lot going on. Let me just take a moment to explain this before we get to the exciting conversation about the weather. Um, <laughs> <laughs> wow, that could write itself right there. Um, anyway, uh, just some things that are going on since the, the passing of my father. One of the things that I have been doing is uh, going down to the greater Cincinnati area, and I, I've been helping my mom uh, rebuild her bathroom. And actually, these gals here have actually uh, done... Me. The same thing. Emily has not because Emily has a job and has to stay at home. Uh, but Kay and uh, Kim here, uh, who actually lives down there, has come over and has helped us. And her sister, Amberly, who happens to be here, uh, she likewise comes down and, and has helped us in the deconstruction part of the room and uh gals uh, just nod your heads i'll know that was quite a job wasn't it <laughs> okay i, I, feel I told the you hard to, labor from here i told you to nod your head you didn't have to give me that evil <laughs> okay so uh you sound pretty, like red green <laughs> pretty <laughs> pretty pretty hot days too wasn't it i mean uh kimmy who never sweats no that's amber amber never her sister who never sweats, broke a up. sweat. I mean, uh, Even she broke so, a sweat, yeah. yeah. So it was 95 degrees, 85, 90% humidity, and we're hauling out nasty drywall and all kinds of stuff. And yes, we were all sweating like something fierce. <laughs> and, and what's that sound effect to sweating? I don't know. Mm. You, you were like, I stepped outside and I went. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but I when I was walking that. in my shoes, it was like. <laughs> I believe the I mean, sound is. Know, well, that's that, that, that's no no. It, that's that's what it sounds. Your feet were farting. <laughs> no, that's release what it the assassins. No, 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 no. Here's the here's the here's the two different ones though. That's what it sounds like when you're walking in high tops. What you were doing. That's when you're walking in low tops. Okay, low cut shoes. So that's the difference. You, you're, there's more water in your shoe when you're when you're walking and sweating like that. But anyway, so um, uh, about every two weeks or so, I've been traveling down there, staying down there all week, uh, remodeling, gutting out this bathroom, and and trying to put it back. It has not been an easy job. It's um, um, so far I have measured five different sizes of woods that have been used in the uh in the bathroom for framing purposes um we've had a window that was totally rotted out that i found out the hard way it was rotted out or actually the easy way i yanked it out and everything came out <laughs> and it's like oh man i'm in yeah. trouble and so we we had to get another window um and, and it just just different things like that we've moved the plumbing from one side of the room to the other the sink was on one side of the room we've moved it over to the other we took a closet out of the room uh and we're building a custom-made shower all the drains have been moved from one place to another so i mean we've done total plumbing remod um total uh, incoming water remod, new floors gone down, half of the ceiling is brand new that's gone up, and we will be moving the electric uh, Ooh, from one side of the roof. But after, well, but after you gut a room, moving the electric is actually one of the easier things to do. Um, the problem here is just identifying <laughs> where the electric goes <laughs> which was if i'm not mistaken that was a job that i put you and k on yeah. right trace, trace the wire trace that said. wire and tell me where it goes and it'll they, be fun he said <laughs> no he just said do it just do it i i knew it would just be fun 
do it. And uh, they they lost it. They they couldn't find where it went. So it was it was well, kind of hilarious. We lost it in the middle. We found the beginning and the end, but then we lost it in the middle. We traveled no. up and down. No, the no, 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 no. No way of knowing that that other side belonged <laughs> to that water. Because you lost it, you lost it. Because it's all in similar colors. Yes, very true. And you, and you never know if that that wire may have come from somewhere else. So anyway, um, I'm running low on coffee. I'm getting these terrible waves at me. Uh, it looks like she's trying to land an airplane. Um, uh, really? It looks like she's trying to swat a bee. Or that no, her hair is on it. fire and she's trying to put it out. No, I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm trying to land the plane into the water. <laughs> anyway, it's time for our first break. Go get a refill and come on back. You can do it. We can help. That's B. Andrew's stance. Are you in good hands? You're listening to the B. Andrew's Radio Show. Welcome back to the second segment of the B. Andrews Radio Show, and it is so good to have you back with us. Uh, during the break, we uh, we lost our, our camera person. Um, they have a tendency to take off, and, uh, well, I mean, there's only so many pictures. Now, of- now, it's not the time to get all scatterplaned and freak, freak. Okay, Say that again. <laughs> we're, we're going to stop right there and just let him finish. Yes. Um, Sorry, it's, I'm tired. You, you, you can only take so many pictures of me. There's there's only so many angles of fabulous that you can cover. Um, He's fabulous. Fat. Yes, I'm fabulous. So anyway, <laughs> um, as we're, we're, we, we were commenting earlier tonight, we're going to tonight today, we're going to talk about our, <laughs> hey, you want to know what time it really is. is. <laughs> we're going to, we're going to talk about mm. the weather. And a, as we're doing this and the whole reason which, you know, I realize is a topic that we had never covered before, but the whole reason for, for doing this is because, um, there's a storm front coming. Uh, just check the radar and just, that's a song. yes, it is. Um, but I'm not going to sing it because copyright issues. Um, John there's Denver. no, yeah, Billy Joel Stormfront. Storm coming in. What oh, did we okay. literally just anyway, say about so, copyright? Um, there was, there's a, there's oh, wait, a storm. No, that, was, that was Kenny Chesney. There's, there's a storm. Oh my gosh. There's a storm front that's ready Denver to roll too. in and, uh, the thunder and lightning is going on outside. So it, as we're doing this show, if you hear any crashes of thunder, um, if we, we drop the drum set. No, um, <laughs> did it, if there's a, uh, <laughs> if there's She's a, got my back. yes, you do. If there's a sudden um, blackout of sound and um, we come back on, that means uh, power kind of went for a moment. Yes. We would technically lose everything we've been talking about except for the first segment. So if you hear us talk about it, it happened. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, gotcha. That's fine. That's fair. Um, anyway, so that is the thing that, that's going on out there. And, you know, people just, this is one of the things I wanted to bring up about whether, uh, you know, people just really get uptight when the storms roll around. Now, we have the different kinds of weather. Here we are. Uh, we are probably like at the far northern end of Tornado Alley. Starts all the way back in Oklahoma, swings up through the Missis- the I, I think it's called the Delta area across the Mississippi, Illinois, uh, and, and swings up towards this way uh, over towards the uh, Ohio Valley and, and in through there. And um, uh, so actually up this far, where I guess we're not part of Tornado Alley, but but. <laughs> I've never experienced a tornado in my life, so you, you know. don't remember when Mom grabbed two blocks of cheese headed down to the yes, thing? but ben that wasn't a tornado. Me. No, Ben. No, it was. Yes, it was. It was. Ben yeah. recruited me and you to grab as many blankets and things as possible, and Chris is like, oh, "My guitar!" So he went in and he grabbed his two thousand dollar guitars, and he ran over to the church and grabbed his amp and everything. And so John was trying to help him haul it over to the church, and Mom's just like, "I'm hungry," and Dad's like, "I'm trying to see if it's actually going to hit us before you guys start freaking out." And I'm like, "I don't know." what i'm doing but i think we're building a fort in the basement let's go <laughs> there you go you gotta have a positive attitude about it oh ben um, was freaking out but yeah, it was like well, there's, gonna be a tornado. And, and, there's gonna be a tornado and chris doesn't do well with these kinds of storms either he no. he has a tendency to be a little freaked out and that's that's some of the stuff i wanted to talk about you know um because this this kind of weather this kind of stormy weather goes all the way back to when i was a kid in cincinnati one of the Highest outbreaks of tornadoes in an area happened in the greater Cincinnati area uh, back when I was a kid. I think, and I'm, I'm pulling all these stats off the top of my head. The year was 1974, and I think... <gasps> You're old. 
Thank you. And uh, I think the total number in the greater Cincinnati area of tornadoes was 104 um, that that broke out in the particular area. Some were worse than others. Some were touchdowns. Um, you know, and not, not, I knew that was going to oh happen. Oh my gosh. Some weren't. It's just that tornadoes were spotted going horizontal. Um, Look, there they go. Funnel cloud. <gasps> All in a herd. <laughs> um, but there's, there's a town, uh, north of, of Cincinnati a little ways between Cincinnati and Dayton called Xenia, Ohio. X E N I A. Is it still there? Uh, actually, Xenia in 1974 and in the 90s was hit by another tornado, but the one in 74 was the worst. And it literally ripped the whole town out. Xenia, Ohio was ripped mm. off the map by a storm. So Didn't that happen in a, in a Bible story somewhere? Uh, what? Not quite a storm, but an entire town was just ripped out and destroyed. Oh, are you? Mm. Are you yeah, but, are that, you, yeah, yeah, but not mind. by a giant wind. Well, I mean, any means. Any means? It, no, there was a very specific means that ripped that town. It yeah, but what it, I'm saying is, is if it, it needs to be gotten rid of, any means. Well, any no, means. But, but see, that's the whole thing. Xenia was built back, and then in the 90s, it was hit by a tornado again. It only tore up half the town that time. But they didn't learn their lesson. <laughs> I guess. Um, but here we were. I had just gotten home from uh, baseball practice. The only year I ever played baseball as a kid. And, and I, never again. I, never again. It could be because of the summer. And um, we had just gotten home, and I can remember that time in the evening, and there was this golden hue outside. It was a real weird color that was coming through the clouds because of the, some sun was piercing through some very, very dark black clouds that was going on. And, and, and I can remember people were saying, oh, you know, we're ripe for a tornado. Uh, watch out. The conditions are there. We were under a tornado warning. The and sky the, was that perfect tornado color. Uh, I, if, if there is, um, yeah, if there is a tornado color. And I can remember that we were, you know, grabbed the transistor radio. My sister grabbed her cat. Princess? Uh, no, Elmer. That was oh, the that cat's one. name. <laughs> yeah. Um, poor cat. She had it by the throat and its eyes were bugging out. And we were all standing by the front door and we had our dog was with us and we were listening to the radio just and I had I think I know where we were going to go, but we were told to be standing by the door ready to go because we could end up getting a, a tornado uh, coming through our area. We never had a tornado come anywhere close to us. And at that time, I say, you know, I talk about the Cincinnati area. We were actually in Ellesmere, Kentucky. Uh, that's where we, you know. It's just I, across I the river, but it's far up, enough away. Grew across the river. But remember what I said around, draw a big circle around Cincinnati, and there were 104 tornadoes that, that broke out. There that's was pretty a, wide radius. It is. Because Cincinnati's um, on, a, on a juncture right there next to. Well, you got Ohio, Indiana, Kentucky, and yeah. it's right in, there in the corner where Ohio, Indiana, Kentucky all come together on the Ohio River. Um, and and there was uh, another little town called Sailor Park. Uh, it was totally ripped out. And, and <laughs> sail was, away, sail away, S -A -Y -L -O -R. sail away. S-A-Y-L-O-R. has a Y. I don't it. care. That was a good pun. <laughs> yes, it was. And uh, Sailor Park was ripped out. Anderson Ferry was also... Um, which is really funny. Sail away, sail away, sail away the ferry. You know, the, the, the reason why it's called Anderson Ferry is because instead of having a bridge there, a ferry service had ran there for well over a hundred years, and uh, so yeah, that, that's the name of that town that's down there. Um, I'm, I do know that a couple of places out in Campbell County, Xenia, Ohio, but the one that is most notable is because a story happened, and they ended up. One of the TV shows that came on a little bit later, some of you may know about it, called WKRP in Cincinnati, uh, which is about a radio station in Cincinnati, which the actual radio station it took its call letters from was WKRC. That's the actual radio station, um, AM 550, um, still on the radio FM down there. U. Huh? FM 99U. No, 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 no. 55 WKRC in Cincinnati. Well, but they did WKRP in Cincinnati, and... The, they did a show on it, and what it was, um, there was a after it happened in the afternoon, heading into the evening, and a DJ was on when these tornadoes were going all through Cincinnati. And one of the stories was that a little girl 
could hear the wind was rattling there her house uh, was just shaking like crazy and she got scared and she called in because her mom had it on the speed dial which was a thing back then and she hit the speed dial called into the radio station and he the guy the dj put her live on air and he was talking to her and she told him about how scared that she was and he said just stay on the phone with me stay on the phone with me and the tornado passed by in an area that you have been to. It's called Kenwood. Oh, yeah. Because there's where it ripped up that area so bad that afterwards, uh, instead of building houses back, it, that's why it developed into the mall area. That used to all be houses in 1974 where that mall is sitting now. Huh. And uh, Kenwood Town Mall. Um, Talk about I, sudden real estate. I rem- uh, Yes. Yes, <laughs> it, it actually happened. Um, there All was out there was a Sears store. Which later we went out after the de- after the tornado demolished it because Sears was getting rid of all the things that had survived the tornado that might have been scratched and dented but still worked, and we purchased my grandmother's big chest freezer there that you might still remember because we still had it. It transferred to me. It was thirty forty years old. That old one we just got rid of? Not just got rid of. Not this year. But, we got rid oh. of it about uh, seven eight years ago. And oh, um, barely, yeah, and it had the big crease across the top of the oh, ha, uh, top ha, of the lid. Ha. But isn't that where someone, someone either slammed it or jumped on top of the to try to close it and they ended up denting it, didn't it? No, it got by debris that was flying through that the tornado. That had been there for forever? Yeah, th- th- oh, we bought okay. it. Okay. Bought it that that's way. That's been there since the 70s. Yeah, it, it, okay. since 1974. And I that's... thought Ben was doing something stupid and ended up denting it. That's what I thought. <laughs> no, 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 no. It was from that tornado. And WKRP in Cincinnati redid that whole episode of the little girl calling in. And it is true, the tornado went by their house, literally ripped the house apart, disconnected the phone line. And people, if you were listening to the radio... Oh, I bet you that gave everybody a heart attack. Oh, it did. Everybody was listening while that happened, and it was live and on the air. Now, the little girl survived. Okay, so good And everybody was like... (gasps) Good news. Well, yeah, all the major TV stations ran the story on it that, yes, they found her. She was okay, but three quarters of her house was ripped away. But where she was and the phone and where she was calling stayed still as if it had never been touched. And the rest of the house was blown away. I bet you she got on TV and a bunch of grandmas were like, oh, pray for that child. (laughs) I can just imagine Grandma Welker freaking out over that. I think a lot of people were praying for her because they could hear it. And uh, and it, it was... One one of the one of the cool one of the cool stories that was there, and and as a kid, I got to drive down Kenwood Avenue a week after the tornado and go see all that devastation and all those houses just just ripped up. And, well, you're one of you're one of out. only so many people that probably remember what it even looks like. Uh no 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 I I said so it, many I didn't say few uh, I just said so many that uh, remembers let's see. what it looks that was, like in seventy four. Uh, I would have been eight years old, and. Um, I wouldn't have been eight yet <laughs> in June of 74. I wouldn't have been eight yet. I was seven. And, um, uh, but there's other people that w- would have remembered, um, you know, what, what that looked like. But it's only it was, so many all in Cincinnati because of how many that would have gone out to actually see sure. it, worked on it, or would have remembered what it looked like before and then after. So. Now, something that you guys still wouldn't so, remember so just many. prior to us moving here to Hancock, Wisconsin. Uh, the, we, we moved in, um, we, we, we came in, uh, July of that year. Um, but in April of that year out here on the interstate, which year it would have been in 2001. Okay. Cause you didn't say what year you just said that year. Yeah. That year in 2001, <laughs> that one there right were, there. <laughs> there was a row of trees that was going up the interstate for a windbreak and a tornado, uh, not very far here between, between Plainfield and Almond okay, uh, on the interstate. And there was a row of trees and a tornado went through that row of trees. It's a little over half mile long row of trees. They were very mature old pines and a tornado went through there and ripped all of those out. And so it the was, problem with pines is they grow so tall and so, and they're just one and they are, long but, thing that they kind of bend over and snap. They bend, but the tornado caused them to twist and snap and... And so we came in here and you drove up through there and it was three years before that farmer finally cut them all down 
And then it was another two years after that before he got all of those trees replaced with uh, with a windrow of trees back. So it took him like uh, six, seven years to uh, replace that 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 tornado ripped out that was there on the interstate heading up there. I'll, I'll sh- re-show you sometimes. We pass by that way. I'll show you those trees. So that's a little bit about, you know, tornadic weather. Um, have a really funny... Tornado. T- I think it's called tornadic, but I may be wrong. I'm anyway, a little bit purpose. about tornado weather. Um, have a really funny story to tell you about your grandpa and grandma sometime uh, about a tornado. But it's time to refill our coffee mugs and talk about stormy weather. Ooh, isn't that a stormy weather? Isn't that a jazz piece? Stormy, stormy, stormy weather. I think it is. Anyway, oh, you yeah. go and refill your cup and come on back. I, I didn't know I had any of the symptoms. To the best of my knowledge, I had never had a problem before. All I did was enter the coffee shop, and the lady behind the counter said, Morning, hun. And I looked at the glass case and saw my reflection. There it was, on my face. Smiley fascia. Smiley fascia, or smiley face, is a condition caused by feelings of uncontrollable joy, peace, or tranquility. When the labs of Pharmaceuticals Unlimited comes to pressure. Depression is for those who are experiencing symptoms of smiley fascia or smiley face. Other symptoms may include singing, whistling, or in rare cases, skipping. Not all smiling is related to smiley fascia. Seeing others knocked down or in pain might also lead to smiling. Ask your doctor about the difference. Depression is the first truly green drug, as we have used recycled cyanide, mercury, DDT, and a dash of sodium chloride. Using Depressia can help you lessen your carbon footprint on the planet. Once I started taking Depressia, I felt so bad, I didn't have anything to smile about. 85% of those taking Depressia in a lab trials experienced lung failure, kidney failure, liver failure, death, and death-like symptoms. While taking Depressia, do not come into contact with sunlight or be around uplifting people, and this may hamper the depressing effects of the drug. If you continue to have uncontrollable feelings of joy, peace, and tranquility while taking Depressia, contact your doctor right away, as this might be a sign of deeper psychosis. Depressia took the smile right off my face. If you're struggling with smiley fascia, there's a light at the end of the tunnel, and it's an oncoming train. The pressure is not recommended by anyone and is not in stores. The pressure is solely a mythical product of Pharmaceuticals Unlimited and is presented by the Avlib Council. Ask your doctor about the pressure. Welcome back to the third segment of the B. Andrews Radio Show. Just really quick, um, talking about the stormy weather. And man, uh, you may end up hearing it on uh, our recordings because there's no way that we could keep it out and do the recording. And we must get this recording done. It sounds peaceful. It's kind of lulling me to sleep. The the thunder? Yeah. Okay. Well, if, if... if our microphones pick it up, there's uh, there's quite a bit of thunder going on outside as we are talking. And we were talking about tornadoes uh, before we took the break. And just a real quick story about tornadoes that um, that I got for you. Your grandpa and grandma, my mom <laughs> and dad. I was going to say, which one? Lived in a house trailer in central Indiana. Ooh. Yes. Uh, this is already they, starting out really good. This is this is when <laughs> they first got married. Is this as bad as the one where they went to the campgrounds and and uh, Ben had to like, Ben was like spread eagle on the tent floor trying to keep the tent from blowing away? Um, no, maybe better. So anyway, um, uh, dad is at home alone. Mom is working at the glass factory. Actually, I got a so that the story's right. She worked at Armstrong. She didn't work at Indiana Glass. And uh, that's in town. And so Dad had come home, and he was tired, exhausted, not paying attention to any of the stuff that's going on around about him, like the weather. And he decides that he's going to take a bath so that they didn't have a shower. Mm -hmm. He's going to take a bath so that he can go to bed, okay? And (laughs) now it's a house trailer. It's not built like a house, it's a trailer. Right. And all of a sudden, he said, I'm in the tub. And he said, I noticed things were just strangely quiet. Then all of a sudden, I hear this. And he said, it just started roaring outside. And he said, and I looked and the walls of the trailer started sucking in. 
And he said, <laughs> it, reminds me, it reminds me of Dom Periscope. Yeah, he puts the like, string on either side of the thing and he's like, <laughs> we're going under. She's going to squeeze like a tin can. Yeah. Watch this, boys. You're going to see something you ain't never seen on those big subs. Yeah. And so. And he's uh, laughing and they're all just like, oh. Yeah, it was. It was unnerving everybody. Yeah. He said the walls kind of started coming in a little bit. He could hear the windows. <laughs> a little bit with the walls as they were coming in and he said here i am naked in the bathtub what am i going to do <laughs> like just sit there like oh this doesn't hit me you know it's it's indiana <laughs> flat there's nowhere to run nothing to get under there's you know he's Wait, like the tub over if he really wanted to. don't worry the tornado will do that <laughs> <laughs> you know so anyway it did end up passing by within a quarter of a mile of where he was and uh i think they got a little bit of broken glass out of it but other than that was okay however 10 years later Mm -hmm. 10 years later another tornado went almost exactly down but was a half a mile closer in other words it 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 literally hit it and the house trailer blew up and uh and and so uh, yeah, uh, that that house trailer was destined to be hit by a tornado. Well, you know, I think all of them are. It's sort of the sad reality <laughs> of house trailers. Was Mater was Mater saying, "I'm as happy as a tornado yeah, in yeah, a trailer, trailer park"? park? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's one of his expressions. So another one was as confused as uh, Ray Charles with a Where's Waldo book. You know, but they come with the raised dots on them for the <laughs> So all you have to do blind. is find a specific dot. Oh, I found, I found him. I found Waldo. He's right well, here. You, what you, you can't see is we're holding our hands out, feeling around. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They're bad. So, <laughs> so bad. Yeah, it is. It is. It is pretty bad. Well, let's change seasons because we go from the bad weather uh, and the stormy weather stories that we have of, of summer, which are the tornadoes and the severe thunderstorms and all that kind of stuff to our winter weather storms now they're they're they could be bad they could be bad but the nice thing about a winter storm is well you know it's bad in wisconsin once they finally cancel school and the plow trucks haven't gotten to the roads yet right (laughs) you know that's bad and 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 so we have the winter stories but the thing about the winter stories is that you could just like okay it snowed really bad We'll get to it tomorrow. I'm having another cup of hot chocolate. <laughs> right? No one's worried because they're yeah. like, okay, I know I got to wake up early to shovel, but I got my snow tires on and it's only a couple inches, so I should be fine. Let's see. I we got, just, we go slow and I we got, wait for the plows, plows to come back. I got water. And, we baked a ham yesterday. Um... What else? Most people have the pellet furnaces, so they're toasty. You know, I, so, mean, I mean, it's Wisconsin, so we've got like wool everything. You do right, and if, now you do. When we're up here, the one thing that we do is we we call our elderly and say, "Hey, are you okay?" Because yeah. some of them still check this out. You know, we got ninety year olds that are still burning wood, and so they have to be able to get to their wood and stock their fireplaces and. And do things they like can't that. Afford the pellets and, and, and so, yeah, and, 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 you know, they're on 20, 40 acres, and so they cut their own wood and, and plant their own trees. That way they got their own heating source and, and this kind of stuff. So, yeah, we, we, we call on them and make sure that their water's flowing, that it hasn't frozen up and, and, and that kind of thing. So, yeah, you, another thing most people don't have to worry about is, is if the frost level goes down far enough, the water pipes will freeze. And you, so you have to sometimes let your faucet just kind of drip, drip, got to let it drip. drip. Um, yeah, it, that, drip. that's an interesting thing. Um, you it's know, annoying we, to try to go to bed and you hear it in the sink. Well, see, now Boop. we we have said Boop. that we're from Cincinnati, and most <laughs> everything in Cincinnati is between twelve and and eighteen inches deep because that's that starts getting you down by the frost line and below the frost line. Here, uh, it cracked me up the first time when I asked them. I said, uh, hey, if we were to lay in a, a foundation, how, how far do you got to go? And they're like, 48 inches. That's four feet. And I'm like, four feet? Like, My goodness, where's the frost line? He goes, depends on which year. <laughs> right, because even we have our seasons. Like, we've had a, several mild winters, mild winters. But I can remember as a kid, we used to get so much snow that you could build a snow fort so easy. You could build like 10 in our yard. And it was like super easy. Yeah. And then there's and then there just kept being really warm, really warm. And then there were several that were just like freezing, but no snow. Mm-hmm. 
And then now we're getting back to the snow-filled winters now. With, they're not as necessarily as cold as they could be, but there's tons of snow. Yeah. So, it was like, we're just... I'm finally getting a feel for the rotation of seasons that winter has now in Wisconsin. It yeah, just takes a long time it, to go through. It is. Uh, and since we've been here, just, just a little side note, since we've been here, it was our second or third year here. So somewhere between 2002, 2004, uh, one of those winters uh, that we were here... Uh, we got no snow uh, through through January 1. And I know specifically, you know, when I say no snow through January 1, it starts to snow. Um, end of October is a little early, but Dude, middle of November. it snowed in May. <clears throat> Remember, it snowed that on Chris's count. wedding. That doesn't count. It was count. May 8th. That doesn't count. Anyway, but that's the next year. <clears throat> what I'm talking about is uh, the snow season starts end of october it can oh you mean when it sticks and it starts accumulating it starts accumulating yeah. but it's usually november and the the deer hunters like for there to be snow on the ground because easier it's to track easier deer. to track you can deer. find the right. blood spots mm, really well exactly and then the footprints and it, even if it's just soggy the footprints make it really easy right so that that starts about our our snow season there a week or so right before thanksgiving um, but this particular year, we had no snow through January 1. And I remember that because uh, I had, for our youth group, I did a lock-in on December 31st. Oh, I remember. We did remember the, we had that. the SpongeBob theme lock-in. I and, still have that CD. Oh, wow. Okay. That, that questioning <laughs> SpongeBob, I have that CD. Oh, you're... It's orange with bubbles on it. Yes. Anyway... <laughs> I, I did that. That, that was No, me. I remember mm. that. Like, barely. But I remember. Th- oh, man. Well, you're anyway. tickling in the back of my brain. Anyway. It does not feel comfortable. <laughs> so we... we <laughs> do you want to know how it looks? <laughs> anyway, never mind. So um, It looks uncomfortable. So And I remember... So we did all that. We had the night lock in. We did the thing with SpongeBob. We did the, um, we did the band thing that night. And... And, For your uh, information, there's nothing creepier to non-church people, and even most church people, than sleeping in a church at night because the church transforms from being this friendly brick building to suddenly this cellar that you're sleeping in, and you're like, "There's no <laughs> cellar. It was. We're all on one floor. We're surrounded by cinder block. It is not. Those are bricks. They're cinder block. Well, over on the other side of the building, it's cinder block. Mm-hmm. But okay. Anyway, so and I remember the last parent came in at seven thirty, got the last kid out, you know, and I'm walking, <laughs> Mike. I'm walking over from the church to the house, and as I'm walking and making my way over, it he's making started, his way downtown. It started to snow. We had no snow on the ground. I'm walking across the frozen tundra of Wisconsin. And it started to snow, and I thought, huh. And I said to myself, huh. Oh, look, a snowflake. A snowflake. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> and it proceeded. Out. It proceeded to, we, we ended up getting and making better than our average that year. But instead of spreading all that snow out from November to March, we did it all from January to March. You know what I think? I think people have taken into account the Earth's rotation and have been able to calculate a leap year in order to put our calendar back on track. But I don't think they account for the rotation plus the complete orbit around the sun. So, you know, what? I think our calendar is sometimes thrown off. I am not a rocket scientist. I can't help you on that one. That's more. That's, a, that's astronomy. But I do know this. <clears throat> I do. I have got a frog in my throat. I am so sorry. Well, rib it him up. Where's that frog? Right there. Right there. <clears throat> Everybody, that was the frog. It was not me. <clears throat> Dang it, frog! Somebody kill that frog. As he's creepily <laughs> staring at it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's just looking over the side of his chair, going, "Dang it, frog!" <laughs> anyway, so I, what's that all about? What does that mean? What does does that it, I'm mean? getting hand signals. I cannot interpret these. What does that mean, Mr. It means producer? I'm going to kill you, but I'm going to do it very slowly. In- <laughs> yes, <there is. laughs> interpret them better, because if you can't work with the hand signals, I I've think been we're you. over time. Are we over time on this segment? What do you think? I think, I, I think I'm you're not done. Time. <laughs> I'm not done with my story yet. So anyway, where was I at? You were walking over, about? and it was a whiteout. It was. It was oh no, it didn't have white. I just started snowing. But what I wanted to say was somewhere between two thousand two two thousand four, we ended up getting uh, six weeks in a row. We averaged one snowfall, and that snowfall averaged eight inches every time for the next six weeks. 
And it was just, it was, you knew you were going to get it. And one of them was a 14 inch snowfall. It is every time. Okay. It's going to snow this week. What day? And when you do, it's going to be a buttload of snow. It's just <laughs> like, oh man. And and it would just cut right into It's like your Canada week. was is using its snowblower once a week. Yeah, kind of kind of thing and throwing it all down at us. So, <laughs> anyway, I must obey the producer's rules. So, it's time to take a break. So, fill your cup. Come on back. Let's talk about stormy weather. If you'd like to hear more of the B. Andrews Radio Show, visit us at our YouTube channel at B. Andrews Band. Hit the subscribe button if you'd like to hear more from us, and to stay updated, hit the bell. Remember, at YouTube, at B. Andrews Band. Hey, Emily, want to see me pull an armadillo out of my few? Ah, uh, not this trick again. Nothing up my pant leg. Whoosh! Presto! <laughs> Un gran gato negro in meth pantalones. Welcome back to the B. Andrews Radio Show. Welcome back to the fourth and final segment of this edition of the B. Andrews Radio Show, talking about stormy weather and stormy stories and... Stormy wind. And, and what? Nothing. That's my cousin. Okay. <laughs> Every time um, you say stormy, I'm like, ooh, you mean like stormy? Yeah. No. And, and uh, you know, there's, there's so many other stories, uh, the stories of the Ohio River freezing over and one of my cousins actually walking across it, the, the frozen Ohio River. That was... There was when it flooded more than once. That's crazy. Yes, the Ohio River flooding. It's done it several times. The worst back in 1937. I wasn't around when that happened, but my grandmother was. But you was. knew someone who was? Yes, my grandmother was, and to hear her talk about they literally still... getting a rowboat to get around downtown Cincinnati. Now, here's the funny thing. Down by the river, so yeah. they have a little pole with Noah's Ark on the top, and it's like a 30-some foot pole. I can't remember exactly, but they said where the where the pole where the boat would be on top of the pole, it would look like it was floating on the water. That's how high the waters were. And I was sitting down. I'm like twenty some feet from the river itself on a normal day, and and like I'm sit, sit, sitting there looking up at this pole, and I'm like, okay, that's high. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. How long? I turned. To, I oh, turned yeah. to mom and I'm like, how long could I tread water? Yeah. Oh, the city of Cincinnati did that and it flooded really bad. Uh, the flooding up here when we first got here in 2004 or five, uh, we got 14 inches of rain in three and a half hours and our area flooded out up here. Well, they I mean, we're it, like the one area that's all sandy around here. Uh, and they called it a 400 year flood because the folks around, nobody around here, nothing had ever been recorded around here like that happening because we're on so much sand, you get enough water and it just goes and filters right on through, through the sand. But we got so much so fast, it ended up flooding everything all around. So uh, we've been through that weather situation up here. Uh, we've, uh, we've, we've had a, a ton of snow, but we've, we haven't had those ridiculous kinds of snows like they have over in Buffalo, New York, where it literally goes up to the second story of a house and people have to go out the second story window to get out. Out um, the window, out yeah, the window. So we, we haven't had those kinds of things. However, uh, we have experienced, you know, and just different things as a family. We, one of the things that we have experienced because we do a lot of about Idaho? traveling together is oh, going through Idaho <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> we were singing, um, you know, this is B. Andrew's band story. John's with me and Emily was singing with us okay, at the time. First, can I tell them about this ridiculous bridge? Um, like before we even had, before it's we It's not even about had, the weather, but go it's, ahead, make it's it fast, not, make it fast, make it fast. Okay, but this is more ridiculous than the weather story he's about ready to tell. We go to cross this, it's a major river, I can't remember its name, but it was on the Lewis and Clark Trail, the river they would have taken to go out to the West Coast. And we went to go cross this river, and you would think on a bridge that the planks going on the bridge would go across the width of the bridge. You know, so, you know, to support the rate and everything. The way you usually th see things like on a rope bridge or something. Normal, right? Nope. All the planks on this stupid bridge went with the bridge. Like, lengthwise. They were all, like, glued together somehow. I don't know. It was like a giant chop board. It, it the, was. Because they all ran the same way, yeah. It was. And we're taking <laughs> the Suburban. And what happened, down. what happened when I drove up on the bridge? 
Someone wanted to get on and on the, the other, other side, side, and it was a one lane one that barely fit the suburban and the trailer. And we were trying to, we were crawling across this bridge. And there are no rails are on no the rails. bridge there either. No it's just a flat just, plank. Yes, <laughs> mini planks. It's a flat mini planks. <laughs> it was interesting. It was interesting. Me and John both sunk below the windows. Yeah, they, and we're they, like, they, don't look, and we won't jinx it. And Dad's like, I have to look. I'm yeah. driving. It was, it was it, it, it felt sketchy. So anyway, we sang there. We went on the way home and we took route 12 Which through that road down into the campground was ridiculous yes we took route 12 <laughs> home the guys told me and they said and, and i didn't pick this up they go oh the fastest way back to the interstate from here is taking route 12 and then 12 will take you to i think 94 you pick it up at bozeman montana and then you're a straight shot back okay really cool and uh, they said, I think it just opened up. That was the words. I did not pay attention to the guy's words. Oh, you didn't hear that? I heard, I heard it. that. I heard me it. And John, me, but I did no, not, me and John were discussing it on the way there. But I did we're not like, make a mental note of what he <laughs> meant by it just opened back up. And I looked at John. And actually, before then, they had these giant wild blackberries growing at the campground. And we were so hungry when we got there. We'd like clean those bushes like completely. They and had, then we they found out they- Giant they, what? Blackberries. Blackberries. Oh, and okay. then we found out they made a steak. So we were like, yes, blackberries and steak some of our favorite <laughs> that was they treated us so well each one of us got our own ribeye yes and that had been so cooked over an open mesquite wood fire and so a baked good. potato i they they treated us so well out there I'm so hungry and it we ipe so idaho good. as i recall anyway and so we started coming back and i'm like yeah we got to get back because we got to make we we have uh, 26 hours to make it back to uh, Janesville, Wisconsin, which hey. is a 23 hour. It's a 23 <laughs> hour drive, and we got 26 hours to do it in. Spoiler: We made it. We made it. We did. <laughs> we, we made, made it, it on time. Um. So anyway, we're. So I said we better get going tonight, and um, we took off. We go down Route 12. It's, the sun went down on us, and I did not realize that we were in a canyon with a river running right it went, next it to went us. It went dark, and it was almost completely pitch black if it weren't for the headlights in front of us. So we could not see like all around us. We could only see directly in front of us, and then like the moon if we were lucky. But the clouds had already rolled in, so there was no seeing the sky. And then the lightning started. And then the lightning would strike. And then, and then I it would realized, flash. And, and then I realized that we're in a canyon. Next to how, a river. How bad a flash <laughs> flood would be if the they dropped too much water on us. And so I'm like, we, we I got to drive and get out of this canyon. And so I kept pushing and pushing that night and tried to drive as fast as I possibly could. And I really couldn't get above 50 miles an hour. Because of the windy canyon and being so black. Oh, Idaho and... is ridiculous. It has ridiculous roads. Like, ridiculous <laughs> I want roads. To go Most back. of them are one lane I want and to you take can't a, see around the I want to take the my bend. motorcycle through there sometime. <laughs> no. I bet it's gorgeous <laughs> in the daytime. In the daytime. And so, and as we're driving along, all of a sudden I'm smelling this smoke. And I'm like, wow. John. I'm in and out at this point. Like, I'm trying to sleep, but I keep waking up to hear them talk. And, like, there's something telling me I need to be awake for this. It's like, John, <laughs> keep me awake. Keep me awake. We got to get out of here. I don't like the lightning and the canyon and the flash flood. And, and, and that smoke is just annoying. I wonder who's burning down in here. That's what I said. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I looked over to my right and optical, optimal delusion, optical illusion um and i look over to my right and i see what looks like a little town that has all these little lights glowing you know kind of like you know i'm looking into buildings with their windows on you know because i'm so tired windows That's what on my, uh, lights, lights in, in, the, the windows. in the windows yeah <laughs> and i'm like john is that a town over there look at all those lights and he goes i don't i don't know i can't tell it's uh dad that's fire on the side of trees. And I'm like, oh. yeah, I sat up to hear what he was talking about, because I remember that piece of conversation. And then I remember the comment about the smoke because dad rolled his window down and I'm like, oh, stop that. Ugh. And so like I sit up and I look out the window and like there's like these tiny little orange bursts of flames, of flames. still on the side on of the, the sides trees. Of the these pitch black trees. So that gave me my <laughs> next incentive not to stop until we got past that area. So I just laid back down and went back to sleep because yeah. I was like, nope, not dealing with this. See see how everybody treats dad? That's uh, I trust you to get me out of here. Don't you even. Yeah. See how, see how everybody treats dad? Yeah. So, you know, I was on my own, on my own. So anyway, 
Um, that brings us up to this section of the show because today we want to give you a little good news. Well, you know, it's time for a little good news. Let the sun shine through for me and you with some good news. Speaking of fires, today's good news segment comes from a website called Today by Scott Stump. That's another pun in there somewhere. (laughs) Two-year-old girl hands us <laughs> shut up. Two-year-old girl hands out burritos to exhausted firefighters battling the wildfire. A two-year-old girl has made sure that firefighters in Northern California have a full stomach before they head back to battling the deadly car fires raging across the region. Chelsea Lutz, 30, posted an adorable video on Facebook of her daughter Gracie handing out breakfast burritos to the firefighters in Anderson, California on Monday after they finished the night shift fighting the fire that has killed six people four of whom were firefighters. Right. Gracie knows all about what firefighters go through because her uncles, Lutz's brothers, Colton and Cody, and her grandfather, Jerry, are all part of the group that are fighting the car fire. Oh, man. They and hundreds of others are working tirelessly to stop the wildfire that has forced 40,000 evacuations and destroyed nearly 900 homes. Yeah. Cody was finishing a shift on Monday when he told Lutz he was hungry for a burrito. So she and Gracie got to work on feeding the whole crew instead at the Shasta District and Event Center. We were really just trying to show these firefighters we care and we support them, Lutz told today. The firefighters made sure to pose for a cute picture with Gracie on Tuesday to say thank you. In the beginning, the fire was kicking their butts and it was sad and disheartening for them. So I think any little kind gesture goes a long way when battling such a tragic fire. Pretty awesome story, and I tell you what, this is uh, we're uh, we're going to draw our show to an end here, right here. But um, there there have been some firemen that have lost their lives in that fire. There was a grandmother and two of her grandchildren, I believe, that lost their lives in that fire there in Shasta County. And uh, I don't know if you remember Mount Shasta. That no, we, we went saw. through there. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the area. That was that was the one where we saw the mountain in the distance. And we drove for like an hour, and it was still in the distance. Two? We drove for like two hours. It took us two hours to get to it. And we were like, well, it took us two hours to get to it. But finally, at the one hour mark, we're like, is this thing getting any closer? (laughs) It didn't look like it. Mount Shasta is pretty big. Um, So as we wrap up our show today, uh, just kudos to this young girl going out, taking care of the firemen around about her. And I would challenge um, our listeners Pray for the the firemen that are out there trying to put the fire out, putting their lives on the line to um, save their uh, resources of their state, the woods, the the land, and and uh, other people's homes and things like that. They're they're putting their lives on the line in order to save things that belong to other people. So if and when you can, bow your head. I say a prayer for those guys and um, and keep them in your thoughts and prayers. That's going to wrap up our show for us today. Thank you for being with us, and uh, we want you to join us again next week. God bless, everybody. Bye.